Okay, hi there. So on the day I was visiting Lassen Peak, uh, it was the day that the remnants of Hurricane Hillary, uh, if you remember that, in 2023, were hitting Northern California. So it was completely clouded in, uh, rainy, the peaks were obscured, I couldn't see very far. And so I thought before I take you down to the field video I made on the ground, which does show some cool things, uh, I'd start with a little overview here of the eruptive history of this area around Lassen Peak. And so the area of interest we're going to focus on uh, sits here to the north of Lassen Peak, an area called Chaos Crags. And Lassen Peak is another one of these big um, volcanoes in the Cascade Range. Uh, this one sits in Northern California. Of course, it's caused by the subduction of the Juan de Fuca plate beneath North America. But let's look at Chaos Crags in a little bit of detail, this flank eruption on the sides of Lassen. And then I'll take you down to this roadside stop I made um, down here along the highway to look at the rocks in, in detail. And so this eruption here at Chaos Crags began about 1100 years ago. And it started with an eruption of ash and pumice. So as the vent was being established and cleared, all that gas rich lava was erupted and it formed a, a cone and you can see what's left of the cone here along the flanks of Mount Lassen and this white area here is some of that pumice and ash that came out on when this eruption took place about again 1100 years ago but after a period of time the gas rich portion of the magma was depleted and so what then began to happen was you had the upwelling of silica rich lava but poor in gases that just oozed out of the ground and formed these big mounds here these blobs these are what we call lava domes so these lava domes that make up chaos crags were all in place um, after that initial explosive eruption and the first one dome a um, welled up and then five more formed over the course of uh, you know in rapid succession we don't have real timetable on like how many years were in between each one but at least in the geologic re record it looks like they erupted more or less um, nearly you know in, in sequence or sequentially if you will so you can see these big blobs here on the flank of Lassen that form chaos crags and somewhat this is somewhat similar to what we saw on Mount St. Helens in the 80s right after the initial uh, explosive eruption in 1980 it continued to have eruptive activity as it just oozed out these silica rich pasty lavas within the crater or near the summit area of Mount St. Helens it did the same thing as well in the mid 2000s when it resumed some activity there as well it just produced these lava domes so these lava domes that form these thick uh, steep sided masses here uh, there's six of them, even though they look like they all kind of merged together here. But there was more or less six sequential uh, events that took place. And then we're going to fast forward to about 300 years ago. So about 300 years ago, these domes had already been in place. But one of them here, Dome C, actually experienced uh, a catastrophic uh, collapse, uh, what we call a rockfall avalanche, down um, the, I guess this is the northeast side. Let me see, is that the northeast or northwest uh, yeah, the northwest side. Let me swing back around now. Down the northwest side um, and down into the lowlands down here. And all told from start to finish, this first one went about five mi or five kilometers, so about three miles uh, from the dome out to the leading edge of it here. I actually kind of rode up onto, this is Table Mountain, and then, and then uh, rode up onto it and then turned down this way following the low areas here. So this is a big pile of debris, loose material, big rocks. I'll show you here in a second when we head down to the road. Uh, but this would be a, a dome collapse, um, not because the dome was uh, squeezing out this hot uh, pasty magma, because that can happen sometimes. Dome collapses while the dome is erupting are very common. This was after the dome had completely cooled and crystallized. Remember, this was 800 years after Chaos Crags had formed. So possibly it was triggered by an, an earthquake regionally that, that shook and destabilized this very steep, unstable uh, side of the domes. Or maybe it was just you know some sort of natural event. But nevertheless, this big area of um, just debris and just devastation, I suppose, is what's known as chaos jumbles. Um, 
and so there was three uh, of these collapses the first one again was the biggest one but then there was two more that occurred shortly thereafter and so now what we're going to do with the video is go down to uh, this little roadside stop here uh, right along the road here and look at some of this material and I think you'll find it pretty interesting and also there's a really neat and interesting uh, twist to the story when we look at the rocks themselves so hopefully that helped in providing a little bit of context here's chaos jumble at the northern part of Lassen Volcanic National Park on a bit of a cloudy day but luckily with its roadside access it allows us a chance to uh, look at how this strewn field of rock um, looks on the landscape up close and personal and what's interesting about this deposit and this volcanic event is that um, lava domes are prone to collapse but they typically collapse when they're still erupting that silica rich sticky magma and this one apparently collapsed when it had already largely solidified and cooled off about 350 years ago um, but let's take a look at these rocks in some detail because there's another interesting part of the story here other than just the the impressive debris field of rock that we see here uh, going off in the distance you can actually see some of the this hummocky lumpy topography so it wasn't a sheet of debris that came across the landscape it it had high points and low points and areas where it was thicker than others and the rock of course is um a rock known as day side or this might be actually rhyodacite something in between rhyolite and day site. and so we can see if we get in here and look close um some of these large plagioclase and some of these might be potassium feldspar crystals so these feldspar crystals making up much of it there could be some quartz in here as well we can see the large crystals in there but what's more interesting about this rock are these large blobs of darker rock now in other places and probably in other videos I've done uh, you could call any foreign rock inside another is sometimes known as a xenolith so we sometimes get xenoliths in a variety of different geologic settings uh, but they usually indicate a rock that was already there that was then carried by in this case the magma or the lava up towards the surface but what's interesting about these is to look at their shape for example look at the shape of this one it's just a really weird shape if this was some pre-existing rock particle you don't think it would have a shape that would look quite like that and so what these actually are these blobs of rock are darker they're mafic they're at the other end of the magma spectrum essentially basalts maybe basaltic andesites but they're very different in terms of their original their composition than the pinkish rock that they're contained in so what we have is we have the rhyodacite um, that erupted about 350 years ago but embedded in it we have these darker uh, mafic rocks let's call them basalts even though their composition may be uh, slightly off of that but they're pretty close and they look a lot like basalts so what we have here is um, these blobs of magma are actually what are known as quenched inclusions and what that means is that this this lighter colored rock this silica rich magma had largely uh, solidified or nearly so when mafic magma injected into it and as that mafic magma injected into it it formed these blobs that we see here uh, in different places and so let's head over this way it's a little diff difficult walking through this obviously let's see if we can look at a couple more of these up close here's a great example of just how irregular uh, the margin is right if it was a typical solidified rock that was already there you'd expect them to have you know somewhat normal looking boundaries as a particle or a class but you can see the weird embayments here just a very irregular boundary on them um, another one over here with kind of like a little offshoot coming off of it here and so the idea is is that these mafic magmas these darker materials were injected into this cooler uh, silica rich magma here that forms the the day site or the rhyodacite um, 
and it's thought that maybe that might actually cause an eruption because if you push hot magma into cooler magma um, it's carrying dissolved gases with it it probably heats up the magma a little bit more and possibly that triggers eruptions i'm not sure if there's good hard data on that but that's that's one model uh, that's been proposed so quenched inclusions just a really cool um and neat feature we see here at the north end of lassen and hopefully you can see how these are a little different than what we might call xenoliths in terms of their their shapes um just their their sheer volume there's a lot of them in here like every nearly every single rock fragment in here has you know one or several of these uh, mafic inclusions embedded in it so just another little fun part of the story here uh, down at Lassen Volcanic National Park in Northern California.